Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you are doing well today. So in this video I'm answering another question that somebody asked me and they wanted to know how can they cleanse their Santa Muerte statue without getting it wet. So I'm assuming they don't want to use anything that might damage their statue. I don't know what it's made out of. So they want to avoid, I imagine, regular water, holy water, soap water, Florida water, any like oils or anything like that. So I made a small list of a couple of things. I think it's nine things, if I remember correctly, that you can use as an alternative. And these are basically ways of cleaning the statue energetically. Some of them are very similar to one another, but I'm just giving you different variations of a form of cleansing or just different options, if that's what you're trying to do. And this also works for not just cleansing Santa Muerte statues, but any kind of statue you have of any kind of saint or really any object in your house that you just want to clean. It doesn't even have to be something spiritual. It can be anything really. So the first thing I wrote down is using a bell. Now bells are a type of sound cleansing and sound is very potent in cleansing. Now the first four things I've listed here all have to do with sound. So with bells, you would just simply take a bell and you would ring it and let kind of like the vibrations of the sound kind of permeate the object, ring the bell around the object. I have a bell on my Santa Muerte altar and I usually ring it and um, at the start of it, and it also kind of sets the tone for everything. So uh, you can ring a bell around the object to cleanse it, you know, ring the bell with intention, you know, just ring the bell while kind of feeling that strong desire for the object to be cleansed. So that's one thing you can do. Another option, another variation is clapping. And it's even better because it doesn't require any items outside of yourself. So all you would do is basically clap your hands and you can, you, you can even cleanse an entire house like this. I don't, I personally don't know how, well, it's not that I don't know how to do it, but you basically just walk around clapping and it's a, uh, you have to really listen for it. So, you, so uh, basically the clapping, the sound will sound kind of muffled because of all the stagnant energy. And when the clapping starts to sound more clear and has like a ringing tone to it, that's when you know that the space is cleansed or the object is cleansed. So clapping is an alternative. I know some people are really good at the clapping method and they can cleanse a whole house. Like I said, but for me, I have trouble differentiating between the sounds, but I think it's maybe more of an intuitive thing. I haven't done it in a really long time. So uh, obviously, the next thing is sound, which the last two have to do with sound or vibration, but this is just sound in general. I mean, like, like those cleansing bowls, things like that. You could even play videos on YouTube of like of cleansing bowls or healing sounds or like certain frequencies of healing energy. I don't know all the Hertz, but all the different kinds of like 180 Hertz or whatever, for example, and uh, sound is very well known and very proven to help cleanse and clean many things. You can use it to clean your energy field, you can use it to clean your house, but you can definitely use it to clean an object, sound. And the last thing relating to sound I have written down here is prayer. The power of words cannot be underestimated. Words are very powerful. When you pray over an object, you're really imbuing it with your intention. And when you say prayers out loud, you are really, you know, adding a stronger element to what it is you're trying to do. And uh, a slight extension of that would be singing, singing with intention, this singing with the intent to cleanse because singing is even more powerful than simply speaking. And praying is more powerful than simply speaking. So I would say speaking, then praying, then singing in order of power, probably. So that's another thing you could do. Obviously, the number one thing would probably be smudging. It's the most common thing. Before people would only use like um, certain kinds of sage, but now they have different kinds of sage. They have different kinds of plants. You can use lavender, all kinds of different bundles of different types of herbs. I know some people were trying to gatekeep smudging because I said it's a Native American closed practice. But these days people use smudging or people do smoke cleansing with all kinds of things. You can do it with incense. You can do it with bundles of herbs. You know, really it's kind of just up to you. But Obviously, smoke cleansing is a tried and true method. It's a very tested method. It really works. I have here 
you can use flowers. So this is like a sweeping method where you have the statue and you have a bouquet of flowers and you kind of run the flowers like up and down the statue to kind of cleanse it, like sweeping the bad energy or the negative energy or just the, you know, wayward energy off of the statue. You just want to cleanse it and make it, you know, like a clean slate because, you know, statues get handled by a lot of people. So another, so that's another method is basically using um, herbs or flowers, a bouquet of flowers to kind of brush off the statue, like as if you were brushing it off with a broom. And by extension, I guess you could even use an egg to cleanse the statue. So that's another method you can do. And um, you can also breathe on a statue. I know that sounds really weird, but um, breath can have a cleansing element to it, especially when you inhale a lot of energy and you imagine or you visualize the energy entering your body. And when you exhale, you imagine the energy traveling with the breath. You know, you can use it to clean small things like rings and pendants and necklaces and amulets. You can use it to clean a statue. You know, it's basically just using breath work and kind of directing energy with the breath. So that's another method you can do. And it's a very subtle method and it's a very quick method. Okay, the last two are kind of two in one, and this is cleansing something using moonlight or sunlight. So with these methods, you would want to leave it in the direct moonlight or the direct sunlight. I know sunlight can be damaging to things like over years, but just once in a while, leaving something in like open sunlight just for a few hours can really do the trick. Sunlight is naturally cleansing. That's why when you want to cleanse a house, you open all the blinds, you let in the sunlight. Sunlight is very cleansing. And I, I feel like it'd be even more powerful if you put the statue outside. Also, you don't want the statue to get dirtier, physically dirty or in like harm's way, but putting it on a windowsill works just fine. So leaving some, leaving it in the moonlight or in the sunlight is a really good method for cleansing a statue or really anything. It's also very popular with cleansing like necklaces and amulets and things like that. Spiritual jewelry. So those are just a couple of methods. I just wrote them down right before I started filming, just off the top of my head. Methods that you can use to cleanse, you know, your Santa Morte statue without getting it wet physically. So those are some options you have. Most of them are cheap. Some of them don't require anything at all, like clapping, singing, praying, or breath work. And I'm trying to think of anything I can think of off the top of my head, but I don't, nothing else is really coming to mind. Also. You can pray simply, and when you pray, you don't have to pray in the name of, an, of a deity to cleanse the item. You can just simply just a general prayer of um, cleansing. You can also do a spell to cleanse an item, or you can absolutely call on an entity to cleanse the item. You can call on planetary spirits, whatever it is you work with, you know, whatever floats your boat, spiritually speaking. I know we all have our own paths and our own things we work with. So uh, with that being said, that's all I really wanted to say here. If you want to support the channel, then I have a Patreon linked down below. And if you want to make suggestions for future videos, you can comment them down below. Um, I don't get to respond to comments the way I used to before, but if you are a patron on Patreon, then um, you kind of, uh, you are more, you're a hundred percent likely going to be responded to and I will most likely make a video out of anything you have that you want to know over or at least regarding any topic you would like to know more about if I can help you in that regard so thank you all so much for watching and I will see all of you in the next one take care